go. Thanks for that. I'm Fiona Ladian here in Martinique, where the scientist has, uh, has been assessing the motions of the volcano pet. She's a well-respected scientist, or so I've been told. But here she is. Oh, sorry about that. Got a bit bored monitoring the volcano and I built a fire. Well, you know what happened from there. Anyway, I have been. You asked me to come in about the mo about the volcano that I've been monitoring for the last 10, 20 years ish. Yes, we all know about the eruption of Mount Pelé on the island of Martinique in the Caribbean Islands on May 8, 1902. It was devastating for the people of Saint Pierre. How did this volcano erupt? Well, on May 8, the volcano erupted with a thunderous explosion. A large cloud of black, superheated ash, bath, and rock spewed out from the volcano and rushed towards the city of town city and town of St. Pierre. Only 6.5 kilometers away at 160 kilometers per hour. In minutes, the city was in flames. Mount Pelé is a part of the Lesser Antilles, an arc of volcanoes approximately 530 miles long, caused by the North American plate, overridden by the Caribbean plate. So Mount Pelé is the result of a typical subduction zone. People died of a combination of the blast force and the searing heat. Did they know this was coming? Well, there were signs beforehand. The first sign was in late April. There was reports of animals fleeing the area because they felt the tremors of what was to come. On April 23rd, there were clouds of smoke and ash that came out of the volcano. Then, on May 5th, the volcano intensified and there was lava and mud running down the volcano. It ended up running down into the valley of River Blanchet and a sugar mill was destroyed. We estimate that around 20 people were killed. We have first had experiences from a French traveller called Lyon Compere Leandre um, on what had happened on May 8th. He was in a boat at the time, watching the ash and rocks tumble through St. Pierre. From from what was said by the French traveller, the volcano erupted loudly. Would you like to quote it? Because my memory just isn't as sharp as it once was. Okay. From the depths of the earth came rumblings, an awful music which cannot be described. All the air was filled with the acrid vapors that had belched from the mouth of the volcano. From a boat in the roadstead, I witnessed the, the, the cataclysm that came upon the city. When we got ashore, we called aloud, and only the echo of our voices answered us. We saw great stones that seemed to be marbles and strength, but when we touched the toe and foot, they crumbled into unpalpable dust. I picked up a bar of iron. It was about an inch and a half thick at three feet long. It had been manufactured square and then twisted as to give it greater strength. The fire that had came down from Mount Pele had taken from the iron all of its strength and had not left it so that when I twisted it, it fell to pieces like so much broom straw. I know that the explosion for Mount of Mount Pele was not accompanied by anything like an earthquake, for when we entered St. Pierre, we found all the fountains flowing, just as though nothing had happened. They continued to flow and are flowing still, unless destroyed by the later explosion. There was no flow of lava. It was all ashes, dust, gas, and mud. Well, wow, that's very exciting. Although our reports say that there were two survivors. One was Augustus de Paris. He survived because he was locked in a cell so far underground that it protected him from the worst effects of the volcano. He was trapped in that cell for four days after the eruption with no food or water, but he still managed to get enough air to survive. Because his cell was windowless, he had no idea of what had happened outside. He called for help and was eventually rescued. The other was the French traveller, of course, named Leon Combert de Neandre, who was quoted in the book. Yes, you are absolutely correct. There, that is what happened. Also, the truly devastating thing was that the first survivor was a murderer. Do you know anything about the casualties that they found? My practice people told me that you guys also found a charred body of a woman clutching a silk handkerchief. A carbonized body was found with their shoes undone and severely burned bodies next to others that fire had crushed only slightly. 